Hello and welcome to A Pair of Dice Lost Podcasting Channel. My name is Brendan, my pronouns are he, him, and I'll be your storyteller for this game about living gods on the wrong side of the law. Joining me for this game is... Hey there guys, my name is Tyler, uh, pronouns are he, him, I'm going to be playing uh, Ricky, the fire affected street exorcist. Hi everybody, my name is Christina, I will be playing Elion. My pronouns are she, her, and Elion's pronouns are they, them. They are a water aspected investigator. Hi everyone, my name's Cody, pronouns are he, they, and I play Amalar Divine, the air aspected shady businessman. Hi, my name is Britt, and my pronouns are she and her. I play a wood aspect named Rush Ferris, who has a ferret familiar named Zeke. Together, they specialize in archery, larceny, and dance. Hi, I'm Michaela, she, her, and I'll be playing Tirali of House Regara, an earth aspected leader of a small military force known as the Tyrants, who collects the books for the gang. And this is Exalted, Like a Dragon Blooded, Act 2, Sins of the Family. Uh, when last we left off, you all had been dragged out of the alley and back towards uh, y'all's apartment, home base, base of operations by your boss. Uh, she basically came storming in, and before that anyone realized exactly what had happened, or while that the rest of the crime family and the crime organization, I should say, was realizing what had happened, and someone had pointed a finger at Resh Ferris stating that she had killed her older brother, Resh Bilar. At that moment, sweeping in like a mother bird, the matriarch of the Goe Satara family swooped in and got you all back to the home office. They didn't point a finger. They said those, they said those arrows look like they belong to Ferris, and then that's when we dipped before anyone could see me standing there. Yeah, I'm sure that was. I'm sure that was very soon to with. I bet she killed her brother. Blah, 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 blah. Power play. You know. I mean, it is a power play, and considering that uh, historically most organizations in uh, creation are matrilineal. Uh, no, who's to say that she wasn't jealous of her uh, older brother who had uh, taken power from their mother? Better off her sister then, too. No, her sister's a woman. She deserves it. Oh, boy. Damn. Damn, dude. That's what matrilineal means. Yeah. He didn't, he's a dude. That's true. Fuck dudes. Well, I'm saying if she wants it to herself, it's off. You know, her sister, and then I think her other brother's older than her, isn't he? Better off your sister, Ferris, if, if you uh, if you want the title of uh, mob boss. I mean, I did just uh, possibly get a new bow. So, we come back to the game with you all at the base of operations. Um, as soon as it, that you all got in here... Doors are locked. Uh, defenses are brought up. Um, the people who are uh, kind of the, I don't want to say the goons of the family, but like the 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 people who do a lot of the the, the running and collecting and the uh, the, the grunt work the are kind of take. Yeah, your gophers um, are kind of taken aback by the sudden entrance of everyone and immediately like. Everybody is jumping to action as that uh, basically like furniture is moved to block uh, windows. Well, maybe not windows, but like doors and like places of uh, entrance. People are kind of like scrambling to figure out exactly what's going on. In this commotion, how are you all reacting? Specifically, I should ask, um, it's been minutes, maybe. How is Ferris taking this? Um, I would imagine Ferris is still in shock about everything. Um, 
you know, for someone who, you know, is okay with, like, just killing random thugs, this kind of hit her pretty hard, and I'm sure she's probably that having a moment where she's just, like, completely and totally useless while everyone else is, like, rushing to get things, like, locked up and everything, and she's still just kind of staring at, like, the middle ground, (laughs) trying to process everything. That's completely fair. A uh, state of shock is uh, after seeing what you saw is completely fair. My arrows. They, as far as you can tell from that quick glance, they were in fact your arrows. I think I'm more upset that I'm not allowed to be at the scene to like investigate it and other people are defiling the crime scene. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there's some occulty nonsense going on that needs to be looked at there, too. Or, you know, all the goons I shot up, they stole the arrows and reused them. And also, an arrow isn't hard a hard thing to make. Like, recreating your arrows would not be that challenging. Well, if she was using, like, regular arrows, if she was using, like, special empowered arrows, it might be a little different. But I don't think she was using an artifact bow before this whole thing. No. I was using regular ass arrows that Ferris probably just put something on them to make them look more like her, like put her own pizzazz or something on it. But they're regular ass arrows. Put a little decorative vine or something on there, made it look a yeah. little more, uh, a little more wood aspect. Yeah, like instead of tying like a feather at the end, tying like leaves or like a flower petal or something. Just a little little pinch of ferrets on the end of those arrows. But easy enough to be created. It's definitely something unique that gives your own arrows their, their own look. Uh, not impossible to recreate, but having your own signature for your arrows seems to not have been the best move. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Divine's noticeably upset that no one cares that he's got a, an arranged marriage to go to. No one knows it this time, other than you and uh, your your boo. You haven't had a chance to tell us, I don't think. Yeah, you have not had a, the opportunity to tell anyone. Like, we all met back up, and then he's dead. Still, it doesn't matter. He's still upset that nobody knows. It's a big deal. Ah, uh, yes, your arranged you. marriage is much more worse than A, our family's leader dying, and B, Ferris's actual brother. I mean, when he died, he was a poor anyway, so, like... Oh my god, Cody. Anyways, uh, so I imagine Elion just kind of, like, has a hand on Ferris to kind of, like, it's gonna sound weird to say, uh, for a water to do to a wood aspect to kind of ground her. Um, and looks to one of the people running around, like holds a hand up to them and will physically like grab their arm, stop them, be like, Can you get Ferris some water? She's going through a lot right now and could use something. Please and thank you. They nod and bow and bow ahead to you and immediately like run off towards, uh, the kitchen and uh, get her uh, a a glass of water and uh, come back. They kind of like set it down in front of her. When they set the water down, Ricky's going to very calmly, very slowly put a small bottle of alcohol, like a flight bottle next to the glass of water. (laughs) He's going to make like a thumbs up and just nod slowly and then go back to I don't know. Helping shore up the defenses in some yeah, way. Yeah, sure, sure. Ricky's very, like, matter-of-fact about everything. Like, yeah, this makes sense. You're getting blamed for a crime. You gotta not get attacked by the goons, you know, bar the place up, you know. Yeah. So what's the next step in this process? I doubt they're going to let us go in. If they think Ferris did this, they're going. I doubt they're going to let us go in and look at the scene, so. Are you asking the group, or are you asking an NPC in, in particular? 
Uh, I'm trying to remember who grabbed us and brought us here. I would ask them. It, oh, it was, was the matriarch. The, yeah. It was the matriarch. Yeah. I would ask her. After that, the defenses have been shored up um, and she has finished taking her uh, commanding tone and kind of cooled down. Uh, she sits in what is essentially the uh, the commander's chair. She is normally a very, like, hard-to-read woman who has, in the short time that most of you have known her, has kind of been a little, st- like, understanding of you guys and kind of letting you guys do what you will. But at any point where, that like, you guys got too rowdy or too out of hand, she might have actually kind of kind of like yanked on the leash, so to speak. Like you, you all know that she has like a stern side to her that she can like flip on at a moment's notice. And right now she just looks exhausted and beat down. Uh, this is clearly hitting her pretty hard and she just kind of head in her hands looks up and goes you didn't do it, right, Ferris? Uh, Ferris will look up with her sad puppy dog eyes and shake her head. Um, no, no, I didn't. Uh, Britt, as a question, what is your guile? Uh, three. Okay. You did do it. You just didn't know you did it. Dun dun dun. I mean, if there was a sword, she did know she did it. We're all being played. Brit's actually just a cold blooded killer. Brit's actually just a a cold blooded murderer. (laughs) Cold blooded. Wow. On eight dice, she only got three successes, but she did meet, so she gets a. Fairly good read on you. Um, Britt, you're not secretly holding back from this plot point that you had no idea was going to happen and actually murdered your brother, correct? Brendan, I'm not secretly hiding anything that I don't actually know about, am I? <laughs> no, you are not. <laughs> okay, then no, I am not. Or are you? Sounds like some bullshit to me. Dude, when he told me to roll Guile, I'm like, Brendan... Please don't put this plot twist on me. I was not ready. It turns out you're a dude. You know what? If you played us all like, you know what? I'm actually going to kill my character's brother. I would like give you a standing ovation. <laughs> you motherfucker. I'd be so hyped if you did that. <laughs> oh, sorry to be the downer for you. Mm, it's okay. Nothing new. Nothing new. I don't know. Her response is sounds suspiciously like someone who did do it, but doesn't want us to know that they did do it by saying they didn't do it. Hmm. Yeah, her responses are exactly what somebody who did do it would say. Oh no, you caught me. Surprise. You got the So end de- of- so, de- so defensive. So defensive, Brit. My dudes, if you really wanted her to be interrogated, I literally have like, three charms I can pop no, for no, this no. Let's, let's, let's move on. <laughs> The matriarch looks to you and try, and you can tell that she is trying to get a read on you. And like, there's this intense gaze that she gives you. And then after a moment, it passes and she kind of le- uh, leans back in her chair and nods. All right. Well, if you didn't do it, then I guess we've got to find out who did. Because it definitely seems like they wanted it to look like you did. Yeah, <sighs> it definitely looks like that. So I guess we figure out where how we're going to proceed from here. Um, obviously, Ferris, unless, of course, you have uh, the ability to disguise yourself, you're probably going to want to keep your movements um, outside of the office, uh, probably under the cover of night when you can. Yeah, the most most I can do is this, and she'll hold her arm out and let the color shift on her arm for a bit, but nothing serious, because of chameleon skin. Oh, well, that's clear. That's very useful. Does anybody have any ideas on who the, who might have done it? 
The problem is with the announcement that was just made recently, it opens up the opportunity for a lot more suspects now. Did he have someone who was in an arranged marriage with him that he didn't marry? Or they didn't want to marry him. They probably didn't. Uh, Divine's just like playing with his nails offhandedly in the corner. Divine, I hate to interrupt. Uh, I hate I hate to correct you here, but uh, arranged marriages are actually one of the things that we actually don't do in the family. It's one of those like. It's it's something that we that we don't like to do. It, it, it's why that half of us left look shy and the other half left the realm and so on. It's we we didn't enjoy that part of life. Yeah, especially now that well nobody's got dowries anymore. Anyways. Oh all right, yeah, I can I can look into the maybe Maybe Bilar had a suitor who was jealous? I didn't even know he had any suitors. Oh, that's real kinky, having a suitor pretend to be your sister. So why would they be jealous and try to frame me if I am his little sister? Like, what's there to be jealous of? As a, you know, I have to get off topic here. Has anyone checked on Falar? We didn't really get twin. a chance. We just kind of got swept up into here. Oh, well, long story short here. Um, so you know, as a as a uh, what's the word? The fancy word for when you, you when for when a guy is your homie. As a not vessel, because I'm still me. As a disciple of the the uh, the broken maiden, I had a talk with her this past uh, this past uh, one of the days. And apparently, there's some nasty fate shit wrapped up with the uh, Resh Fala that I don't know what it's about. Keep that between us, though, because I don't know what the fuck is going on with it, but it could be related. This seems like a weird, uh, seems like a weird turn of circumstance, you know. I found this out literally the night before Bala died. Good to know. I, hmm. I'll tell you what, here's a thought. Why don't I go get her and bring her back here? Because she might also be in trouble. That is a good idea, Rick. Okay, I well, I will. Think you should go alone, though, because if something does happen, you need a backup and witness. Yeah, I can just run the fuck away. What are they going to do? Catch me? No. If you if something did happen to her and you come upon it, you're going to be the first suspect. Okay. Well, so what are you what are you proposing then? Who would you like to go with me? Take Ferris with you. Uh, no, that's a t- terrible idea. That would firstly, n- you know what? No, I think no was the only explanation I had to give you for that. I'm agreeing with Ricky on this one. Well, I'm going to go. So whoever else is going better come on. But I don't need you to go if you don't want to go. Uh, I'll be quick in and out. Bingo, bango, bongo. Um, and then who's present in this room currently? As in, who heard Ricky say that Falar is tied up in some weird fate show st- like stuff? Uh, yeah, I would have uh, naturally like made sure it was in the room before uh, willy nilly. I mean, obviously the matriarch heard, and then uh, probably Desert Bloom and Kathy Kokoki, who are probably here as well. That's fine. I like try to keep my voice down on the Gophers, but. They're not really any consequence. Um, yeah. Uh, if anyone wants to go with Ricky, they can. And anyone who wants to stay here or sneak out and do something else, they can. I don't know if me going anywhere at all in this current situation is a good idea at this current time. And as much as and I would like to stay with you if they can get to the crime scene and do some, let them do some investigating uh, that might go a long way with stuff. Ferris would 100% like encourage you guys to like go do shit as needed. Yeah, so Elian's gonna just look to a group and be like, 
figure out what you want to do. I'm going to see if I can try and gather some evidence. And Ricky is going to try and go and find Resh Falar. What about Divine and Tarali? Uh, what are are the two of you going to stay uh, guard at the at the office, or are you guys? Do you guys have any other leads that you want to follow? Divine likely once he uh, finally snaps and snaps back to reality, and uh, oop goes gravity. Will likely head to the try to get to the undermarket uh to chat with salon about uh how much money how much how much of their liquid assets he can get access to because we don't have the family pocketbook and uh probably need like ways to buy food and shit while we're laying low. Fair enough. And, uh, Tarali, are you going to be, uh, staying guard here, uh, with Ferris, or do you have any place you'd like to be? Is Elaine going to be trying to get evidence at the crime scene in a, like, a sneaky manner, like a stealthy way, or does she plan on just kind of marching up in there? Elion is not stealthy. They are just gonna like go in there and be like, I'm an investigator, let me on the scene type of thing. If you want to stand behind me and look super intimidating, awesome. But if there's something else you really want to do. I guess I can stay behind with Ferris to make sure nobody saw us come up this way or tries to come collect her. Starting from Ricky, who had the idea first to head on out. Those of you who want to head on out and go investigate uh, or help out the family in your own ways, uh, leave with uh, Ferris being left with uh, Tarali as, I guess, a bodyguard at this point. Probably a pretty solid plan, to be honest. Ricky, Divine, and Elian go down uh, the building in their own ways, either taking elevators or using their weird spider walking abilities or I I don't know, do, doing a really cool jump onto a horse. I don't know. Yeah. Just jumping out of the window of the on the 32nd floor right onto Lucille. 82nd floor. Mace 80. flew out the window. Anyway. So we're going to start with Ricky who is going to be trying to track down Resh Falar. If you could give me a role for tracking, which would be wits and survival. Do I have any survival? Hold on. Not a lick, but I have pretty good wits. Okay. Uh, and then obviously, you know, just to remind you, since we're so terrible about playing recently, but like, you know, if you want to describe how you're trying to find her, uh, you know, you can get some stunt bonuses. Yeah, so Ricky's gonna kind of, like, comb the undermarket. Uh, Falar is kind of more of the, like, upper-class part of the crime family. Kind of, like, people see the comings and goings and all, so he's gonna be like, hey, man, you, uh, see the, see the Bilars shaking up anything after the thing that happened to, uh, see the Russians doing anything after you see what happened to Bilar, you know? Gonna, like, slide a guy some money or something, or, like, root around really conspicuous like conspicuously so no one or inconspicuously so no one know, thinks that I'm trying to track any of the other. and uh yeah just kind of like I, I had basically go talk to a guy about a dog you know okay you go talk to a guy about a dog uh, I'll give you an extra two dice for that alright three successes is pretty good you go down into the undermarket and start talking to some guys about a dog. And a couple of people that you talk to are talking about like how that they they saw the the either resh during uh the during calibration uh kind of keeping their own uh keep, keeping their own company or uh not not really going out and partying too much. They seemed 
pretty stressed, especially after after uh, the Day of Secrets. Yeah. Uh, they were mostly hanging around uh, the Undermarket, but you did hear that uh, uh, Resh Falar, uh had been seen closer to uh, one of the uh, one of the towers in the inner city that uh, that you know uh, houses one of the guild headquarters. I've been seen near it, but not necessarily going into it from the pe- from what the people have heard. Mm, okay, I guess I will start my search there then. Can I root around the area? So after going from the undermarket back up back up top. Are you doing anything to keep a low profile? Rookie's dress is so, like, loud that it would be a little hard to keep a low profile just by walking down the street dressing differently. So I'm going to be locationally keeping a low profile. I'll be, like, sliding through alleyways or, like, climbing up on top of buildings and, like, hopping between those. Just be, like, out of that, out of, out of line, like, line of sight from most people. Okay. Yeah. Um. If you could give me a Dex and Stealth roll, and I'll give you an extra two dice. Okay. I also don't have any Stealth, so this will be fine. Now, can <laughs> I just uh? Can I use? I don't have anything to give me a bonus on this. Can I use a Willpower before I do? Because I never use Willpower. Yeah. Yeah. Sure thing. How do I get that again? Uh, you get Willpower back by doing a two dot or above stunt. Okay. Yeah. Why don't I Willpower more? God. Is that just one auto success? Yeah, it's it's one auto success and then whatever you roll. Four. Okay, four successes. I'm gonna see if anyone notices you. Okay. <laughs> wow. Big fat zero on on five dice, but you, you know you love to see it. <laughs> Those guards making their medicine rolls. Mm, they're practicing for their PhD. Well, that Ricky's dress and punk aesthetic might be louder than, well, an entire band going through a uh, Cheerskier neighborhood. Uh, his knowledge of the neighborhood and the ability to slip through alleyways and uh, jump over, j- jump, jump between buildings or even go down the odd shadow land that some people don't like going through serves him well in this endeavor to get towards where Resh Falar was last seen, according to your own uh, sources. Mm-hmm. In front of the guild, in front of the building that you know houses the guild, um, you can see that there is a large commotion here as multiple bureaucrats uh, who bear the symbol of the guild are rushing to and fro with uh, the, the the rising sun in the sky as the the first day the first official day of the uh, of the new year has begun okay. oh I just realized something that I needed to tell you all uh oh as that you know what? Once that I finish up the scene, I'll let you all know because it kind of happens around noon anyway. Okay. Yeah. Not threatening at all. I don't. Be- what was that? I don't believe you. <laughs> you shouldn't. Um. So you can see these people uh, bustling about and getting ready to uh, getting ready to go about their day. Uh, it is the first official day of business for Realm Year 765. Everybody has to get their paperwork in on time. You know, taxes are due. Technically, Cheers Hero is a Realm satrap, so the Jade shipments have to come and go. And everybody is kind of moving about. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of people uh, coming to and fro. Um, now. Falara is a fire aspect also, right? Yes, she is. This is like a sort of like Wolf of Wall Street level fire aspect type shit. Um, uh, This is going to be spicy. Oh? Yeah, because doesn't she like move money and stuff? Isn't she like a banker? 
Uh, that is one of her specialties, yes. Uh, everyone who I have heard of who has, like, that type of personality in banking is, like, really aggressive and, like, like intense. It'll be fine. Let's keep going. Um, so you see all of these people moving about, um, with a quick cursory glance, everybody here appears to be, uh, guild, and if they're not, it's hard to tell. Um, you would need some kind of, like, role to figure that out. Do you go, are you going to just kind of like sit there and observe for a little bit or are you planning on going in? Well, here's the thing. I don't know how much I would know about this, but I've had a pretty big scrap with a big name in the guild before. How conspicuous would I be if I just walked out? Well, if you recall from your day of journeys bar hopping... Uh, you and Thanos, while you both have gotten into a scrap before, have a, let's say, burgeoning frenemy respect going on. Okay. So I might be known of, but I might not be disliked instantly. Correct. Okay. People knowing who I am is not a big deal. I'm just going to walk up. I'll, I'll, like, look around, like, a number of seconds, a minute or two to get, like, the lay of the land, but then I'm just gonna walk in there. Okay, uh, did you want to make any rolls, uh, before you just, uh, walk on in? Um, now, is this a building, or is this just, like, out and about? Uh, this is a building that you are walking into. It is, uh, it's one of the towers that's a few blocks down from yours. I see. I'm just going to kind of, like, move with the crowd a little bit and, like, stick with the... I'm assuming it's kind of a crowded type setting. Yes, it is It is incredibly crowded right now. Like, I know Ricky's very loud, but I'm still going to, like, just move with the flow of traffic to, like, get where I need to be and try to, like, uh, you know, not be productive. You know, I'm going to park Lucille away from the road. <laughs> okay. You're not going to be obstructive, and you're going to just kind of go with the flow of traffic to kind of find a... find what you're looking for. How tall is this building? Um, this one has roughly 50 working floors. Okay. I am going to have Lucille nearby, though, like, in an alleyway. Uh, to to describe it better, uh, it is... Uh, so your... The tower that you guys are in is the most complete tower. There are only a few floors that um, bear any scars from previous wars in there. This one, however, uh, only has about 50 working floors, but there is the skeleton of a skyscraper that goes higher, that it appears that people have been trying to repair. Yeah. Yeah. It's that, like, one construction project that's been going on for 15 years and has made no progress. Uh, closer to 200. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, no one knows how to, um, no one in this day and age knows how to imitate, uh, cheer and glass. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, after I, uh, look around, I just kind of dive in there. So you go through and kind of go with the crowd. And in doing so, you're kind of like not pushing through, but also not making a scene. Um, um, so what that I'm trying to think of is how to have you kind of blend in with the crowd and just keep going. But uh, so what that I was thinking is bureaucracy. You know what? I'd give you. This is going to be such a. This is going to be such a weird, weird role to do. But I would give you like for blending into the crowd, like manipulation and bureaucracy. But I'll try it. Uh, And I'm. With the way that you described it, I'll give you two extra dice. So does it mean I get a willpower back? Uh. For a two up stunt. No, no, no. So uh, uh, one dot stunt is two extra dice. Oh, okay. That's fine. This, yeah. yeah, I'm just going to, this is going to be one of those embrace the suck moments. I say as I get three successes on four dice. As, as, as you get three successes. 
Um, I'm going to see if anybody continues to notice you or takes notice of you. Because, like, I feel like that this is a very much like a, like, let's keep it on the down low. That yeah, sure. Going on. Oh, no, they finished the PhD. <laughs> oh, no. They got three successes. Eh, whatever. It'll be fine. As, as you're walking through, uh, as, as you're walking through the building, you, uh, you get to a floor, you're just kind of like going with the, with the flow of things and you get to a floor where you kind of notice that like all the, most of these buildings usually have, uh, temperature control units trying to keep everything at a, uh, at a heat that is what well, for you as a fire aspect probably isn't very comfortable. Uh, you're probably more used to, to the desert heat and everything, but for everybody else, uh, it, it's a fairly comfortable, uh, right. uh, temperature. Uh, you get up to like the 18th floor where that a bunch of bureaucrats are going to like submit paperwork and everything. And you notice immediately, as soon as that you step onto that floor, the temperature has spiked between five and 10 degrees. Uh, for everyone else, they're like fanning themselves with their paperwork and you just feel comfortable as fuck. Yeah. So fire aspects are just the ones that are always cold. Uh, yeah, more or less. That, that's, how, that's, how, that's how I feel. Fire, about fire aspects are just anemic. As soon as that you get up onto, like you pass by basically like a cubicle and then like an office and then you pass by a second office. That's like a, uh, like it, it's almost like under construction with like those wooden, like sliding doors and everything. And when you pass by the second sliding door, give me a perception and awareness roll. Okay. All right. They just barely get the jump on you. Uh Oh, <laughs> they're ten dice versus your four, and yet they only beat you by one success. Who the fuck? It happens uh, quicker than you expect. You don't hear the 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 se- you your mind barely registers the sound of the sliding wooden door and tight of like a tight hand on your shoulder uh, that your brain kind of takes a moment to realize like there's some like long uh, manicured nails as a woman grabs you by the shoulder and pulls you into the, uh, into the office before slamming, before slamming the, uh, the, the door and looks you dead in the eyes as you have come face to face with Resh Falar. Oh, good. Ricky, what the fuck are you doing here? We don't have a lot of time. Uh, you might be. Uh, I'm going to look around the room to see, if, to see if there's anyone else in here. Uh, there is no one else in here. Here's what's going to happen now. Uh, you're going to leave right now and come back to the old hideout uh, that we got bought up. People are trying to frame your fucking sister for your brother's murder. And we got to go yesterday. Thank you for taking the time to enjoy our show. If you liked what you heard, why not leave a review or tell a friend about us? It helps get the good word out about the work we put into this show. If you wanted to ask us any questions, you can contact us through Twitter at a pair of dice lost or email at a pair of dice lost at gmail.com. The theme song for this game is Dragon Dance by Raphael Crux, used under a Creative Commons license. And for making it this far, I saw that cool thing you did. So have some stunt dice. I put the flower petals that I grow in my hair only once in a blue moon. You can only get those on certain days of the year. That's not true and not canon, but that'd be some shit. That would be some shit. Okay, sounds good then. Um, In that case, uh, I see the Brit is muted for some reason. I did not mute her. I muted myself because Joe came upstairs just in case he had to say something. It was okay. me. I muted Brit. Oh no, you've done it. How the turn is I found a way. Craig did it. He got tired of her bullshit. 
He thought she murdered her brother. Craig's getting tired of your bullshit, Christina. <laughs> what? She's been nice to Craig the last couple of times. Mm. Wh- which which last couple of times? Right. This time and last time. I'm gonna need receipts. <laughs> I think that you have the receipts from last time. I literally sent them to you. I'm trying to recipient oh, trying to go fuck himself. Oh well, never mind. There we go. Which is accurate. I just didn't say it because I was typing stuff. Mm. Wait, were you guys talking about me being muted? Yes, they were. Yeah, I muted myself because Joe was up here and we were talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just making a joke. Anyway. Okay. Yeah, we we heard you say it. We were just like, I joked that Craig did it because he was tired of your shit and thought you actually killed your brother, so. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm tired of my own shit sometimes. And I said, Craig's tired of Christina's bullshit. Okay. And then, and then Brendan tried to say that I have been nice to Craig this round in last time we played. And... Okay, okay, okay. We we are now in a time. Please okay. no more. <laughs> okay, okay. Maybe Craig is also tired of Brendan's bullshit. Let's stop. Let's what, go. What, back what, to game, back to game, back to game. No, no, no. Back to game, back to game. Let it end it. End it. <laughs> well, Britt clearly didn't hear, so it's catching her up. <laughs> and then Britt said, is this because I was muted? And they were roommates. <laughs> they were roommates. And oh, they were roommates. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, God. I feel like that I need to be looking at a fucking character sheet so I can actually look at what skills you all have. <laughs> Instead of just saying the things that I know off the top of my head. Yeah, that's unfortunately um, the downside of me keeping a paper sheet. Oh, no, 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 no. I meant, like, what skills are on the sheet? Because I know oh. that there are some sh- skills that I always forget oh, to... Uh, I see. What, uh, can I, what are you looking for? 